Hello everyone! It has been a while since I've done a video, hasn't it? Well, this time we'll be talking about the Freehouse banner. And, well, without further ado, let's get started. So, as per usual, I'm going to go from worst to best. Dimitri is the clear worst, as uh, sad as this is. Honestly, as far as characters goes with the limited knowledge we have to this point, I think Dimitri is probably my favorite. Because it feels like he has... He's basically crushed by obligations, but... Sadly, let's just say in-game they decided to make him a cav unit. A Lance cav unit. Boy, do we not have enough of those. We have like over 20 of these. To put this in perspective, okay? Lance infantry units, we have 12 of them. 12. And to add insult to injury, guess when was the last Lance Infantry unit we've got in this game? Whereas the last Lance Cav was Burkut in like a month ago. How much time? Well, it's been 19 months. 19 months. The last time we got a Lance Infantry unit was Shiro. Shiro, for God's sake, that was the start of book two. Book fucking two. What? Ugh. So, low skills. Low skills are exclusive to Cav unit and infantry unit, of course, because, you know, we can't have toys that are exclusive to a horse unit. It always has to be shared with um, infantry units. Oh, and same thing with flyers. Sturdy impact, flyer and infantry. Low skill, horse and infantry. Wrath, armor and infantry. Like, it's just... It's getting a bit annoying, I, I feel like. You just get more to tools that are either all-rounders or also just luck to fucking calves. Calves have nothing right now. Infantry units are just so much better. Why would I want to invest in Dimitri when he has 156 BST when I can invest in, say, Shiro and end up with basically 168 because I have an extra five dragon flowers? It's dumb. <sighs> At least he has good fodder, which is basically the best thing I can really say about him. Uh, and his base kit. Noble Lance is cool until you realize that we already have a Lance unit that has a very similar weapon. In fact, so similar they have the same attack, the same 19 might weapon, but the other one is a better condition. I'm obviously talking about Legendary Ephraim. Great. You can even make the case that Legendary Ephraim has a better distributed stat line. Not by much, because they basically have the same attack, the same res, uh, death is basically about the same. Uh, he has two more speed, I think, and Ephraim is like three more HP. It's like, it, it's so similar, it hurts. Now, there's one thing I want to talk about, and it's really funny, because everyone but the scheming one actually has a weapon that's not exactly straightforward for no reason. Um, this is a combo Dimitri can do. Uh, if you run Water Sweep with his weapon and actually end up having 5 more speed than the enemy, you can still double through Water Sweep. Since basically you get a follow-up, but the follow-up is cancelled, it gives you a chance to actually make a follow-up through your own speed. It's a neat thing, but you can also do the same here, and, well, if you don't have the speed, you plug their follow-up, and you get to hit once. That's it. If you don't have the speed for it, you still only get to hit once. So, it's, it's a bit of a give or take. It's relevant in some cases, because the thing with Noble Lance is it requires you and your enemy to be either at full or at not full. So Water Sweep can be, and by some extent, Wind Sweep can be a good option as your B skill if you want to stay at full HP. I already know what a few people are going to say, and it's the fact that his speed is not good enough for that. Those people are just wrong. Uh, well, I'm going to showcase why, because one of his two sets is the one that relies on Water Sweep. 
Now, as far as comparison goes, yeah, uh, Lucas is a three-star unit, has the same HP, one less attack, five less speed, two more defense, and three more res. Why are they basically the same? I have no idea. Then you have Legendary Ephraim, which is the other unit I was talking about, and I guess I was right. Uh, yeah, Legendary Ephraim relies on a condition that relies on him not having anyone around him. I know this may come to a shocker to like two people, but that's kind of the main playstyle horse units have, especially with Gale Force. Uh, since there's no HP threshold or anything, you can just go in with Mystic Boost and just get, at, get in, kill something and get out right after. This gives so many more options to Ephraim, because the thing is, you can't really run Mystic Boost on Dimitri, because... Well, what if you go back to full, whereas you proc Savage Bow, for example, so oh, suddenly you can't do follow-ups anymore, or uh, why, or it doesn't heal you enough, and then you're at not full, but the enemy side is not at full, is at, is not at that. You're not at full, and they're at full, therefore you don't get the follow-up. It's not great. It's a very gimmicky situation, and as a matter of fact, even the gimmick of running Savage Blow is not ideal. Uh, I'm gonna explain why once we get to the build, but... Just know overall, Legendary Ephraim is just a better Dimitri. It's as simple as that. Hell, you can run even more set on Ephraim, because he has a unique skill and a unique B slot, which I don't understand why none of the people of the banner outside of Byleth has a unique skill past their weapon. Actually, no, it's not even unique to Byleth, it's inheritable. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of strange. Moving to builds. This is what I meant by the speed can hit decent amount already. Uh, keep in mind here, Swiss Barrow is 6 attack and 7 speed. And if you're not merged, well, you're still at 45 speed. 45 speed is enough to be able to still double through Water Sweep um, against most things. It's just basically, you know, with more merge you get more options, you get more stats. That's kind of just what it is. Name of the game is just, just to basically have Water Sweep as a way to fall back to keep your HP at full, so you still keep maintain the full the, the full HP effect. Attack Smoke is there just to be able to tank a bit easier, since you can actually work on that bulk. Uh, 28 res is a bit shaky, and you don't really want to invest in it since Water Sweep is there for you, but if you're dealing with melee foes, that's 51 defense against them, this may actually come clutch to keep your HP at full. Now, the one issue with Dimitri is that you want to be at full HP at all time. Does not matter. It just does not matter. You, it, with this type of set, you need a healer. That's it. You just need a healer. For two reasons. Uh, one, if you want to not get healed, but you know, you want to actually inflict damage to other people, Pain Plus is a fantastic weapon for that. Get their HP down, and then you actually get to have follow-ups. Or you can heal yourself, and suddenly you're both at full HP. This weapon is very unwieldy regardless, because sometimes your HP will just be too low and you'll have to heal. And because you healed, you're at full, hopefully not, and therefore you probably want to not run something like Recover, but more like something like Martyr that actually heals the healer as well, but also doesn't heal you too much or Restore, if you want to get rid of Panic, or um, Physics, if you want to heal from afar. Recover is by far going to be poison to him. Now, the second set is the gimmicky one, the gimmicky one, which is kind of ironic considering the other set runs a Water Sweep gimmick, <laughs> but uh, it's just overall not great. You only get 4 charge if you get 2 hits off with Gale Force, but you kind of have to do this so you can actually maintain your HP at not full. Again, you want, to you want a healer with Pain Plus or I guess Jafar could work, 
not what I'd recommend, however, because sometimes the enemy's HP will be too low, uh, especially because, you know, he does so much damage. As a matter of fact, if you're using a healer to combo into Dimitri, you do not want to run Savage Blow. Uh, he runs into the issue of having so much attack that he will one-shot whatever gets hit, and then not proc Gale Force as a result. <sighs> so, yeah, like I said, very, very problematic thing. Any kind of thing that requires you to run a really long special like Gale Force, he kind of doesn't synergize with it whatsoever. This is what I mean by he's not great. Uh, I I do like the character, but he's so gimmicky to make work with. Hell, want to run Aether? That might actually work against you. Want to run Noontime? That might work against you. M Moonbow? I mean, maybe. Glimmer? I, I guess. It's, it's more like of a there's just no better option kind of deal. And that sucks, because it limits him a lot. Ideally, you just don't want to use Pain Plus and keep him at full HP so he just gets the 5 charge every time, but it's just overall very, very sad me to see. So, moving on to Claude. Yes, I do consider Claude to be the second worst of the banner. Uh, he is the most straightforward of the bunch, both in character and... Um, weapons, uh, at least so far. Uh, Cunning Bow is... I mean, it's not bad, it's just... The main issue really relies on his stat line. His stat line is nothing new. If you have a Brave Lin that you have even merged only once, you probably don't need to get him. That's the kind of problem that he runs into. Brave Lin and him are too similar. Now, his weapon is not bad, it does provide him basically 5 across the board, or reduce the enemy stat by 5 across the board, it's the same thing really. Um, and no, low C speed is honestly worthless, if you're going to run any low skill on him, it's not speed, it's attack death. Look at it this way, his weapon pushes at base speed at 40, the effect of his weapon pushes it to 45, and you're probably buffed by own calf, so it works, so therefore you're at you're at actually 51 speed. Do you need an extra 3 speed from low speed death? Absolutely not. That's way too much already. You're wasting your beast kill. It's just so dumb. It's just so dumb. You have a, you basically have base 45 speed with this. I don't know why they gave him speed plus 3 and not cooldown minus 1 on that bow. If it had been cooldown minus 1, I genuinely do think we finally would have a clear winner between Brave Lin and this guy. But sadly, that is not the case. Unfortunate, really. And again, he's on a horse. Because Alm is the only infantry archer they ever should do. Right? Just like Shiro should be the, the very last forever Lance Infantry unit. You have to realize, they have done like 50 Lance Flyer, even in seasonal banners, but no Lance Infantry. You know, the, the, the fucking movement type that's already overflowed, or overflowing from like any of the Fire Emblem game because we get like 3, 4, 5 uh, Lance Flyer slash Cavs. Oh, look, those banner can let us do basically any type of units. Let's make more Lance Flyers. Let's not do Lance Infantry, or Bow Infantry, or, you know. So, Cloud is another Bow Cav, which... For those who don't understand why I say Cavs are honestly overall shafted, and not exactly the type of movement you ever want, it's because they have less BST. Now, Claude has basically the same BST as Brave Lin, a unit that has been released almost two years ago at this point. Yeah. Doesn't have a unique B skill like Lin does. That's kind of a problem in itself. Statline is not unique. You probably have someone more than one Brave Lin at that point, maybe even merge one into, uh, in, into the one you have because you got good IVs on her. 
you probably got the free copy as well. So you're in a situation of, oh hey, Bravelyn exists, why bother? But yeah, so overall, Speed Plus 3 should not have been here, and yeah. If it wasn't for his breath, you genuinely would not hear anything from me. Uh, as far as this character would be, and it would be bottom, literally worse than Dimitri to some extent. But, ah, uh, thankfully this pref is existing. Also, Death Smoke in the pool for the first time. Took them long enough. I'm aware Panay has it, but it's not in the pool. And GHB slash Grails are fairly expensive. Now, going to the comparison, as you can see, they are extremely similar. Um, just... Claude has 4 more HP, 2 more speed, 2 more death, at the cost of 7 res. That's it. Wow. Now, as far as bulk goes, you can actually make the case that Claude has a better bulk because of his bow. And that's another issue why I say that if it wasn't for his pref, he would not be considered that good. Uh, honestly, if this bow gave him three attack, that would still be good. Like in, in general, there's so many things you could have done with him to make him work a lot better. Um, but the thing is, Bravelin essentially has the same offense, and while they basically have more or less the same bulk, it is true that Claude has a better bulk. But you have to realize one thing: may just do more damage. Dragons exist, uh, and armored DC unit exists. Bravely in a sec is blessing, so the latter point is gone. So, and also a decent bit of res, so you can actually make some. You can actually tank some mages when needed. Uh, Claude is kind of like a bit worse in both cases, though I will say it does work in his favor because of his bow. Uh, his bow pushing his death and res to 25 and 26. But the second you switch to a different bow, Bravelin is just better, because Saki's Blessing can be carried over to Brave Bow. And as far as the Fire Sweet Bow build is concerned, yeah, you can run that, but you basically get the same result with Bravelin anyway. And like I said, if your Bravelin is merged already, it's really hard for me to be like, ah yeah, you should go for Claude. He's definitely worth it. I, because, well, Bravelin is basically very, very, very similar. Yes, I do consider Claude to be a better character than Lin overall, despite not knowing anything about uh, about him, just because Lin has so many issues in her character in general. But with that said, wasting orbs on a character that you barely will use is not exactly what I consider worth it. Now, as far as builds themselves, obviously I'm not showcasing anything that does not use as pref, because like I said, if you're using anything but his pref, then Lin just typically will do the same or better. Uh, sometimes a bit worse if you're considering like slaying bow or any bow that requires you getting hit. Um, and Brave Bow. Claude does do slightly better because of the two extra speed, but that's kind of it. Uh, it. Just it just doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Now the first set is very obvious and self-explanatory. It's just to make him a tank. Can't really go with stuff like no follow-up, no see disrupt, none of these skill, which is again more of an issue for bow you for cav units. Uh, since they have no option whatsoever, Mystic Boost tends to be one of their better options. So, Fortress Death Res plus Cutting Bow plus Buffs uh, can actually push, push your defense to 41 and your res to 42. You also have 49 speed that way, and, well, actually, 55 speed that way. Yeah, you see why I say the speed on the bow is fucking irrelevant? Yeah. Uh, his attack push is pushed up to essentially 63. So he becomes quick, strong, and able to take mini hits with Mystic Boost being a good way to heal himself back up. 
Attack Smoke is also very good to making your bulk last longer, and so is Distant Death. If you're dealing with multiple mages, this is exactly the type of build you want, because, well, it's basically Fae, but on a horse. And with a speed stat to actually prevent follow-up, unlike Fae. Though, you know, Fae, it's more of a problem for Fae, because she doesn't really do much damage to begin with. So, yeah, Ruptured Sky does lose a bit of damage from Attack Smoke, but don't let that fool you. Uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, you don't need Ruptured Sky if you want, which, by the way, yes, it's inheritable, in case you didn't know anything that is not a dragon or beast unit can use it. Anyway, so, if you don't want to get Ruptured Sky, Glimmer slash Moonbow can, do bo can both do just as well. Uh, it just basically so you hit, take a hit, and then proc. Uh, it's a good special for that. Uh, Distant Death is there for just more bulk. Uh, as I said, Rupture Sky do lose a bit of damage from Attack Smoke, but at the end of the day, you prefer your unit surviving over taking, a, over doing a bit more damage nine times out of ten. Now, as for the second set, it's just very obvious. It's it's all pure damage. Um, you get 14 damage from the Brazen, you get 5 from Cunning Bow, it pushes your attack to 73. Uh, 74 actually, my bad. Actually, 79! My bad. 79 attack, 55 speed, um, 42 death, and 43 res, the second year in Brazen. Uh, it's overall fairly decent, just, well, it's not perfect. Still, it's not bad, it's just, you can't really improvise too well with horse units because they just don't have many options. And if you really want to insist on using a low skill, take attack death. It actually provides him help, unlike speed death. Moving on to Byleth. Balef is another one with weird interactions uh, that can actually help her a ton, but before we get to it, Creator Sword. Very strange weapon, which is one of the reasons why one of the gimmick works. All of the gimmick in just taking consideration sweep skills. But, um, yeah. Very strange sword. Uh, it's basically anti guard. Anti anti fighter skills and no follow up. That's it, which is good um, because obviously the comparison is going to be Ira. They have the same playstyle. Uh, she is slightly more consistent than Ira in the sense that she can always get her special off guard and special fighter does not wall her whatsoever. But the second you look at anything past that, it's. Uh, yeah, she does less damage. Ruptured Sky in general is a good special, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's good for an inheritable special. If it was a unique special, I would just be saying, wow, that special sucks ass. Because overall, it's, uh, yeah, you're say you're dealing with a 60 attack enemy. Which is a lot, mind you. You get 12 damage. Alright, for a 2 cooldown, that's actually not bad. As long as your attack is not already very high to begin with, uh, it can be very, very strong because it's 12 damage. It's it's very helpful. Especially with stuff like, say, Wrath. Yeah, okay. I can see it work. The problem is... For it to do full damage, you need to be dealing with beasts and dragons. That's a problem. That's a problem because it's inconsistent. It's going to be great when you're going to do um, Arena Assault. Or Arena, if you score decent decently enough. But past that, it's inconsistent at best. I'm still going to get the special for my, for my Dirgery and my Jam Key. Of course, because I really like those characters and I want them to be as good as I can make them. However, it is no no joke to say that this is overall not a fantastic special. It is still a decent special and probably should be the special you should go for her. 
And like I said, if the character does not have a inheritable special to begin with, it's probably the special you should go with in a lot of scenarios. Especially since Dragon and Beast units tend to be the bulkiest of units. But it's not the end-all be-all. Let's just put it that way. Fury 4! It's actually in the pool. Now, Grail is not the only unit. That's the other reason why I want to pull one of her. Uh, I'm going to be killing her for Fury 4 and Ruptured Sky on Dirdre whenever I actually get to pull her. That's gonna take some time, though. Now, for the weird interaction, I only have one screenshot. Uh, because I've been actually made aware of this only last morning uh, when I woke up and I felt like shit. <laughs> so, yeah. It nullifies your own follow-up cancel. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of a glitch, but I don't think it's going to change. Uh, overall, this basically means that Water Sweep is basically working like Binding Shield, as long as you're quick enough, which, considering you have a base of 40 speed, is very easy. Even unmerged. And no, you don't want to go speed plus on Biolef for this. She already hits plenty, and I mean plenty, of speed as it is. Even on Merge, she breaks the 50. It's kind of irrelevant. So, yeah. Since dragons are kind of a weakness, since she's sitting at 21 res, this is a good option for you to run in order to just get rid of dragons. Uh, do keep in mind, Fury 4 is not really required. So if Sparrow 2 can do just as well, because you don't really need the res to begin with at that point, so you only lose the defense. But you lose the recoil of 8 damage, which is very helpful, considering her special does not heal her whatsoever. So yeah, overall, uh, this is a actually pretty decent gimmick. Uh, and just like Dimitri, I'll have a set on her. And yeah, so comparison's sake. Yeah, a lot of people think that she's just better than Ira until you realize one thing. Violet can get 5 flowers, Ira can get 10. So uh, they have basically the same attack. Uh, Violet has 2 more speed, doesn't matter really. Uh, 1 more death, 1 less res, and 2 less HP. Yeah. They're basically the same stats. Like I said, Violet is more consistent than Ira at pulling the special off, but Ira is more consistent at killing off. Um, because Ira can actually directly influence her own special, as as of well, Violet, if you're dealing with an HP tank that doesn't have a million attack, uh, your special doesn't it kind of falls flat. Ira gets up to like. 20, 21, 22 damage per Regnal Astro, which is the base damage. Uh, Bialef, on the other hand, will get mm, 10, 12 damage against most foes, and then if they're dragons, 22, 24. So, in terms of potential, Bialef can be slightly better than Ira. Very, very slightly better. Um, especially, you know, the second you add the bonus doubler into the mix, Ira kind of just hits a fuck ton of speed, so... It kind of becomes a bit irrelevant. Um, but... Still. Overall, I do consider Ira to still be the stronger option, which is... <laughs> kind of depressing in a way. But I'm kind of happy for this, considering I really like the... I really prefer Ira a lot. Especially considering Biolef has such a shite design for the female version. Uh, I will say male Biolef is better than female Biolef because she ac he actually distinguishes himself from Ira. And also, uh, let's just point this out, it really does feel like most of the quotes are designed for the male version, not the female version. Just saying. <laughs> Yes, I'm wearing this overcoat to give me additional protection. Yeah, you hear that from the female and you're like, what fucking protection? Anyway. 
Moving on to builds. And this should surprise absolutely no one. This is an Ira build. She's basically Ira 2.0 or 0.5, depending on how you look at it. And um, yeah, she can be used the same way. It's very cheap to build since she basically just comes with everything required. Uh, but overall, just use Ira if you're going to use Byleth. She's just, just such a much better unit, as far as th those builds are concerned. Now, as far as the other set is going, yeah, surprising no one. Like I said, if you want to have something with no recoil, Swift Sparrow 2 is basically just as good, if not better. Um, and again, Attack Smoke does hurt Ruptured Sky, but it gives you more survivability. All of those sets really work regardless of merges or not, so yeah, let's move on. Now for the actual unit of the banner that differentiates herself a lot, which uh, by the way, Axe Infantry Unit, the last one we got was Ilgur and then the last one before that was Libra. I don't know what to say. Anyway. So, Victorious Axe, it's literally just a power creep version of Ephraim's weapon. Which is better than Dimitri, so of course by default she's better than Dimitri. Then you have the fact that she's an infantry unit, you have the fact that it has cooldown minus one, and you go, oh my god, what the fuck is this? So, Victorious Axe basically means you don't even need the interaction of getting hit for Gale Force the proc. It reduces it to 4 cooldown. If you have Heavy Blade and you hit twice, you proc Gale Force. That's it. There's just no, like, second part to this. And considering Legendary Azure exists, you can basically use her as a horse unit that is not impeded by trenches. It's nothing but good for her. Doll Close been in the pool, finally, since... It took like 13 months, I think. Either 12 or 13, I don't remember. Summer banners are always such a blur to me, they all feel the same. Just not great. And Ryle's attack death. Now, I hear a lot of people that kept telling me, like, that's such a good skill. And to these people, all I have to say is... Typically, for the units that really want that type of skill, they would round Rouse That, Rouse Speed Res. Because guess what? Especially in Edelgard's case with 39 base attack, you can just combo... Oh, who is this? Elliewood? Mmm, ah yes! With So she gets an extra bonus doubler, so she gets attack death plus 6 because of Visions of Arcadia. Ral's attack death becomes kind of worthless all of a sudden, doesn't it? Um, especially if you can actually just have Ral's speed res, it just basically means you have 6 attack speed, death, res, regardless of where you are on the map. That's ridiculous. So Rouse attack death, I don't really care about it. It doesn't really help that, you know, attack tactic is available in a 3 to 4 star unit. Res ta uh, death tactic is available as a seal, and so is res tactic, but the thing is, Speed, uh, Rouse Speed Death, Rouse Speed Res would both be just as good. It's just that one synergizes better with Elliewood. So yeah, just overall, it's not that great of a skill. It's not bad though, and honestly it also do highlight one of the issue with uh, one lineup of skills that we keep getting on literally every unit ever. <sighs> Which are wave skills. Why would you ever want wave skills? Especially now. Like, back then it was just inconsistent, but there was just nothing better. Now you have basically two wave skills at once in one skill that works on every fucking turn. But on the other hand, you have... A wave skill. Like, why would you use a wave skill over a Rouse skill? Because it's in the pool, right? Because it's in the 3 to 4 star pool, right? Except they don't demote them. Un unless they kind of just realize, ah yes, wave skills are fucking lame. 
We shouldn't be using them. In which case, okay, good. In another case, I would be like, if you're literally wasting copies for wave skills, you need to get yourself checked, man. <laughs> They're just not great. But yeah, um, with that said, let's move on to, well, the other gimmick. Just like Dimitri, uh, yeah, as long as she has 5 more speed than the enemy, she does actually double. And as you can see, if you don't have the speed to begin with, you just get hit. If you have the speed for it, you just prevent the hit. If you have the speed and 5 more speed than the enemy, then you actually get to double them. Now, for the comparison, this is basically the closest comparison you can make. I'm not joking. So, uh, basically the same HP, more attack, more def, more res, just a bit less speed. Uh, though, you have to realize you have to add also Dragon Flowers, since Belinus can have five more. Uh, so, the, the difference is not nearly as big. Still, there's four more def on Edelgard's side. There's one more attack on Edelgard's side. There's, um... One more res on Edelgard's side, and she loses, I believe, uh, four in speed, which really doesn't matter because of her weapon, and two in HP. So, overall, I'd say Edelgard just has a better stat line. Uh, it is true that Basilicos gives it, gives Linus an extra bit of attack, but it also hurts, it hurts his bulk a lot. Whereas Edelgard just keeps her 37 full on bulk, which makes her a lot better overall. It is kind of weird to see it side by side, someone with so much muscle like Linus being less strong than this dainty little girl. <laughs> but it is kind of just what it is. Oh, and also the first merge essentially makes them tie in attack? Yeah, it makes them tie in attack. And 5 more speed overall. Linus is still a solid unit. It's just that overall, Edelgard is very, very much just better. <laughs> she's, she's just a really, really strong unit. The best way I can really describe her is just Shiro with more stats like allocated in the right places. Because Shiro was very similar and obviously with a better weapon because Shiro kind of sucks now. Um... A weapon that gives an extra follow up in cooldown minus one versus what, uh, Sturdy Lance or whatever with 16 might. Sturdy, uh, yeah, yeah, Sturdy Stance. It's like, who cares? Who cares? It's not good on you, it's not good on Lucas, it's not good on anyone if that's all they have on their prep. So, yeah. Especially considering those weapons are so bad that if you just take Luncheon's Lance and you refine it, to attack, you basically just have the same weapon with 5 more HP. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, but yeah. Just overall a very, very strong unit. She actually has the most set I can showcase. Obviously, she, two of them are going to be the Ira build, because she can do the same thing with Ruptured Sky. Hell, just because it's a cooldown minus one weapon, you can just bait with it. And uh, considering you can have 65 attack when buffed, unmerged, that's just disgusting. Because one of the things that actually makes Hyra a bit more balanced is the fact that her attack is a bit on the low side. Edelgard has a lot more attack. Uh, Edelgard has 5 more points of attack, essentially. I'm counting Dragon Flowers, of course, so there was that. So, the first set is simple, uh, it's just to push up a res. Um, this actually pushes a res to a decent amount. Essentially pushes it to, well, 44. 44 res, 47 defense, with 43 speed, and no follow-up to block any kind of follow-up you can get. And on top of this, you also get, well, 78 attack. And you can proc Gale Force pretty well. 
Uh, I will say, however, if you're going with this set, you kind of want to have support on the team. Um, and the support, you kind of just want the support to be... Uh, infantry Rush, which I believe... Braddy has now. So you can actually make that work. So you can still proc Gale Force with all of those stats. Which is kind of disgusting to think about, but... You know. A bit awkward to set up, however, so do keep that in mind. Uh, if all you want is Gale Force, just do not run Brazen Attack Res, and instead run either Flashing Blade or Heavy Blade. She can kind of run both pretty decently. As for the second set of build... The first one is the simple, the simplest one, it's just the Ira DC set. Uh, very, very strong set overall. Especially considering you're sitting on 76 base attack. Uh, Ira has kind of less attack than that, and 76... But the thing is, with Ira, she also has Ragnar Astra, so yeah. It makes her basically a green Ira. The first of her kind. Now the... Oh, the, the first unit that's genuinely a Ira, even with the special and everything. Um, so uh, that's kind of interesting, to say the least. A second set is an AoE set. Uh, sitting with 76 attack, you kind of just blow everything. Even if you're dealing with something with 50 defense. 50! You still do 39 damage on the AoE alone, plus 26 on the following hit. You quite literally kill instantly without them having any chance to do anything. If you think that Vantage might be a problem, you can replace Attack Rest 2 for in exchange RD Bearing. This is also a fairly solid set overall. So, yeah. And I think that's about all I have to say about the banner. We'll be looking at Kronia next. Um, maybe later today. But for now, I think that's about all I have to say. And I, I guess I'm going to be seeing you all later. Have a nice one, everyone.